Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and this is a Madsen light machine gun. And I've done a number of videos on different aspects of the Madsen, different variations of the Madsen. What I haven't done in a very long time is actually take one apart and show you up close how it actually works. If you've read anything about the Madsen and you've heard that it's a very unusual, very awkward, very strange operating system, often uh, described as being something akin to a fully automatic Martini Henry falling block rifle. Well, there is actually one other system that I can think of that operates fairly similarly to the Madsen, and that's the Spencer or Spencer Bannerman pump shotgun. So we'll take a closer look at this and let's dive right in and see how this thing, the purported bumblebee of machine guns that science says shouldn't actually be able to work, let's see how it works. This particular example is a Chilean army model of 1946 Madsen, uh, but mechanically they're all basically the same. So let's actually start with a martini because this will give us the basic functioning premise for the Madsen. So if we look at a martini, when you pull the lever down, the bolt goes down. And when you push it up, the bolt goes up. And what's happening here is you put a round in the chamber, there is a firing pin built into the front of this bolt face, which we can't see because there's a receiver in the way. But what is actually locking the system is the fact that this bolt is on a pivoting hinge and it can't go backward. As long as you're holding the lever up, the bolt can't go down, and so it's locked. All right, we can take this system forward one step in complexity by adding a magazine tube. And so we have our Spencer or Bannerman shotgun here, which has a magazine tube. It's a pump action shotgun, but it still has a bolt that has a pivoting hinge on the inside. It's back here. And so when I cycle this, you've got a bolt that's bouncing up and down like this, uh, very much akin to what we'll see in the Madsen gun. So the way this is working is, once again, in the center of the bolt here is a firing pin. In this case, you can actually see it. It's right there. There's its spring. And if we look at the front, there's the firing pin hole. So this is the bolt face. This bounces up to eject the empty case, which is going to be different than how the Madsen works. But if we look down here, the bottom of the bolt actually has a hollow section to take a round out of the magazine tube. So when I bring the, bolt, the pump forward right here, one round in the tube is going to slide into the bolt itself. It's held down here while the round there's currently a round in the chamber, which will be fired. When I pump the handle back, it's going to bring the bolt down so that it can extract it, extract the empty shell. There's our extractor right there get that moving. You'll extract the empty shell into the top of the bolt and then sproing, throw it out of the gun, bring the next shell inside the bolt mechanism here. And when I move that pump handle forward, you can't really see it until the very beginning, but this is actually going to, the, there's a sliding bar in here that's going to pull the next shell into the barrel, into the chamber, lock it, and it's ready to fire. So once again, we have our pivoting bolt that is sitting here in the center, and because the pump handle is being held in place, the bolt can't pivot up or down, which means the chamber is locked. Now, with that under our belts, let's go to the Madsen. All right, we'll start by opening the top cover so you can see inside. That's very easy. We just rotate this lever 180 degrees up. Top cover springs open. This is our bolt right here. Tell me that this doesn't look kind of like that Spencer shotgun. It really is somewhat similar. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the barrel assembly out. That's also very simple. I just, having unlocked this pin, I now pull it out. It's captive. That allows me to pivot the pistol grip assembly down. And then I can reach up in here and pull out the barrel and all of the working bits in one very convenient self-contained assembly. Next, for background, let's consider the Madsen is a short recoil operated gun, which means the barrel assembly here, this guy, is going to be moving back and forth less than the full length of the cartridge um, in order to cycle forth. When you rack it and make it ready to fire, it actually locks it in the rearward position. When you pull the trigger, the barrel goes forward, and then 
the hammer strikes because it is actually a hammer fired gun. So this is the firing pin extension back here. When this gets hit, that's what depresses, well that links to the firing pin inside our bolt here. This is the actual bolt and fires the gun. So that means we have to have a hammer and it's this guy right there. So if I have the gun cocked, uh, this, this lug actually serves right there to let you manually pull the barrel assembly back and forth. That lug sits in this little tail and pulls the, the gun back and forth for you. At any rate, uh, we now have our hammer cocked here. Pull the trigger, drops the hammer. Um, I wanted to make sure that we get that out of the way, that this is actually a hammer fired gun. Now let's take a look at this whole operating assembly and keep in mind that Spencer shotgun that we looked at earlier. So the main component here is going to be our bolt. It's going to pivot up and down. And when it is in the downward position like this, it is locked in place. It can't go any further down. Now you can see the chamber right there. This is very much an unsupported chamber sort of gun, which I think is going to be worrying to people initially, but what you need to realize is the actual case head back here, that's not what's at risk of blowing out. What could blow out under high pressure is going to be this area right here, where essentially the hollow base of the cartridge ends and the case head begins. That's where you're going to have potentially an exposed area in a firearm, and that's actually not exposed in a Madsen gun. Anyway, uh, we also have this pivoting lever, and this is a, a ramming lever. This is what loads a cartridge. So when this the cycle starts, this lever's back here, and we are going to have the bolt pivot down. Now right now it's locked, it can't go down. In order to make it go down, what we have to do is depress this and pull this back. This is actually the extractor. So on the rearward movement of this whole assembly, this peg is going to interact with a cam slot in the receiver. It's going to push down, which is going to allow the extractor here to pivot backwards. That is, let's see if I can get a good angle on this. I can't really get a good angle, sort of like that. Essentially, the end of this extractor, there you go, you can see it right there, it has a hook on it, like you would expect from an extractor. And that's going to sit over, well, in the rim of the cartridge there. So what's essentially happening is this, on the rearward motion, this gets pushed up and the extractor hits a lug in the receiver and it goes swing and rips the case out and flings it backwards down this little party ramp right here. And you can see the wear on that from cases getting thrown down it. They then subsequently fall out here past the ejection port cover on the receiver. Now the reason we have that whole detour is because it's actually the extractor that is preventing the bolt from moving downward. So when the extractor is in this position, then our bolt can go all the way down. And now, and now you can see that this feed chute in the bolt itself is open. And so what's going to happen, get back down there. There we go. So what's going to happen is we have a cartridge that's coming down from the magazine, lateral to the side of the bolt assembly. It's going to get pushed into that slot right there. And then our feed rammer is going to pivot forward and push it into the chamber. Now the front end of this case is deformed and it's sticking and frankly, this is going to be a mess to get an empty case out of anyway without it being in the gun. So I'm going to stop there. But you can see what this feed rammer is doing. It's pushing the next round into the chamber. As the rammer goes the last bit forward, the cartridge is just about in the chamber. The extractor is no longer being held down. It's going to snap in place. It's going to come in first. The cartridge comes in just on top of it so that the cartridge rim is held by the extractor there. This pops down and the bolt is now popped up into its locked position. It can't go up because 
the front of the receiver won't allow it, and it can't go down because that extractor block is in the way. Thus, it's locked. Now we can move it up and down here because this is out of the gun. But that's locked. Then when you pull the trigger, or if you're in if you're in the middle of firing and holding the trigger down, uh, you hit the full auto disconnect when this goes all the way forward. Hammer drops, hits the firing pin here, fires the round, and the recoil then causes the whole thing to move backwards again and repeat the cycle. So I guess the next question here is, how do all of these parts actually move at the right time in the right place coordinated? And the answer to that is a whole bunch of lugs and cams in the receiver. So the first one I'll show you is this basically square looking block right there. That is actually interacting with the ramming lever. So that is going to push the ramming lever forward and backward as this cycles forward and back. We then have this plate right here, which I can sort of show you right there. That has all of the cam surfaces to control the up and downward movement of the barrel itself. So on the barrel here, we have that round lug that is going to be traveling through these surfaces. Now conveniently, CN Arsenal, whom you ought to know about, uh, I will include a link below to one of their Madsen videos. They actually printed this cool patch for the Danish Recoil Rifle Syndicate, Madsen, that shows all of these contours of that plate inside there. So on their patch, this lug is that little lug right there on the bolt itself. And it's going to move up and down here depending on the forward and backward cycling of the action. And then again, you can just barely see it, but down there is another cammed cam track pathway. That one, essentially when this is down and it's always being pushed down by a spring, it locks the extractor in place so that it can't come back, ensuring that the bolt can't go down and unlock. Uh, when this thing is interacting with that lug in the receiver, it will push this up, and at that point the extractor can pivot freely. So that's what's controlling whether or not the extractor can move. And that's pretty much it. So let's put these back together and let me cycle it a few times so you can see it actually happening in the gun. Alright, so normally rearward action is propelled by the recoil force of firing around. I'm going to do it manually with the handle here, and that handle is pulling this little arm, which is hooking onto this tail on the bolt assembly, to pull the action back. So that is all the way back. You'll notice there are, if you read around, you'll find some people who say that the Madsen is a long recoil system. Well, it's not. That's the full travel. Um, here's a piece of 30-06 brass for comparison. This is significantly less travel than the length of the case. Essentially, it just has to come back enough to give a little inertial kick to that ejector to punch the empty brass out and send it zipping down out the bottom of the gun. All right, so next up we can see that this fires from an open bolt because this is the ready to fire configuration. Our ramrod, a ramming lever, is here at the back. It's ready. In fact, at this position, a cartridge is sitting in the feedway here. And when I pull the trigger, the assembly goes forward. Note how fast that ramrod, that ramming lever, moves forward. That's because it's heavily leveraged. We'll look at that in just a moment. But that's going to push the round into the chamber. There you saw the click. The bolt locked up uh, into its locked position. And that last click is the hammer dropping and firing. So once more. Here's uh, ready to fire. Pull the trigger. The bolt's going to drop. Round gets chambered. Watch the bolt here. It snaps up right there. It's now locked. And back here, the hammer drops. So that's the whole cycle from the top. If we look here at the bottom, that's the lug for the camming lever. And you can see it. Let's see if I can get you a better view in there. You can see that lever coming back hooking that square lug, rotating around it, forward and back. So that's what operates the ramming lever. All right, one last fun fact here. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, let's say 
I'm done shooting. I've let go of the trigger, so the gun is cocked, like the barrel's back, it's ready to fire, but I've got a cartridge sitting down here in this feedway. I can pull the magazine off, but how do I get rid of that thing? Like, okay, I could pull the trigger and that would do it, but maybe I don't want to fire a gun. The gun, there's got to be some way to actually unload the thing, right? And there cleverly is. What appears to be a three position selector switch here on the side is not actually safe, semi, and full. It is safe, full, and the middle position is unload. And what this does, now I'm going to take, I'm going to do this the tricky cheater way because this is, this empty brass will get jammed in my chamber. But what this does is when I pull the trigger, it is not actually dropping the bolt quite all the way forward, and it's not dropping the hammer. This is specifically so that you will chamber the round, but not chamber it fully. It locks the hammer from firing, so it's essentially safing the trigger while chambering the round so that the next time when you cycle the action, it ejects that live round, spits it out, and now the gun is empty and in a safe condition. So. It's such a, like, one of the weird eccentricities of this action made it essential to have some sort of external tool to do that, that sort of unloading at the end of a sequence of fire. If we're going to do odd animal analogies, rather than call the Madsen the impossible bumblebee of the machine gun world, I would call it maybe the trilobite of the machine gun world, because it's an example of a very early design from ages long past that got um, almost fossilized in, in its form. And all of the modernization and the improvements and the, the growth and understanding of how machine guns can work most efficiently, all of that has passed by with no impact on the Madsen gun. The original design of this gun was out of the box, and that's something we see with early firearms designs in all areas. Uh, the very simplest design gets put into practice and gets patented, and then for the duration of the patent, typically you're talking 17 years or so, everyone else who wants to do a similar sort of gun has to come up with their own different way to do it. And that's what we see in the Madsen. It's not the easiest mechanism, but it's the result of a particularly brilliant engineer avoiding all of the other patents that were in place at the time and designing something that by gum actually worked. <laughs> and worked well enough that it stayed in production and commercial sale for 50 years until after World War II had ended. So it's not actually as complex of a system as people think of, it's just one that really has very few cousins that we can still look at, and so it looks very exotic and very strange. But once you understand how it works, it really does make sense, and there's some really cool clever elements to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this teardown. Thanks for watching.